it is clear dishonestly for the foreign affairs CS Alfred Mutua to lie and tell by telling this country that Haiti came begging Kenya to help them restore peace in their country. And this is what Mutua said in the recent press briefing. Haiti looked around and said, Kenya, please help us. They didn't ask many other countries. They came to Kenya. They said, Kenya, you have a history of helping other nations. Kenya, you are very good at doing it. Kenya, you are brothers and sisters. Kenya, we are dying here. We are suffering. Tumefika Muisho, please help us. So we got a request from our people of Haiti. And as good Christians and good Muslims and good religious people, we could not turn and look the other way when our brothers who are suffering have asked us for help. So we decided we are going to go and help Haiti to lead a multinational police mission with other countries. We were in New York and other countries are coming on board. We've got other African nations that are coming. Now, when you do your fact check, what happened is that the Haiti's prime minister, and this is a screenshot I've gotten from the article in The Guardian, Haiti's prime minister Ariel Henry requested international support from the UN last year when gangs began taking control of much of the country engulfing the nation in chaos as they fought pitched street battles. That is, they asked under the nations, United Nations, and Kenya offered to help. And of course, that offer came with some fortunes. We've been given some millions by US, or rather to receive the backing of the US. So it is a lie that they came asking Kenya because that is what has been sold. Welcome to the bold analysis. In this podcast, we look at the police or the officers disquiet of even pulling out of Haiti mission. And in, a, in an exclusive interview with ex-military officer, we are breaking down the Haiti mission mess. And before that, let me remind you about Edwin Mwiti uh, Mwenda, uh, uh, Fadreza Pin, that this boy is called C plus and was supposed to join Kirinyaga University to pursue a course in uh, electronic engineering and um, ele that was electronic engineering and computing. But because of financial constraints, it was supposed to have joined in September, uh, it has not yet actualized. So we, the brother, reached, the brother reached out to me and we spoke with the family and we promised them that what we'll do as team charity in October is to take this boy to school. That's why I'm reaching out to you in a special way that we are doing a 100 bob challenge. At least we'll be able to fundraise and be able to take this boy to school. I just want to get so far where we are. Yes, we are at 37,000. 37,000. But the, the other money he needed, the 20000 he needed for um, paying high school uh, balance had already been sorted out. Some One member from this channel offered it. That was sorted out. So what we are doing on this other side, then what we, run, what we are even remaining with is per, cover part of our first term, uh, uh, first semester fee, and also get accommodation and the others, and the other costs, the other requirements that I needed for that course. They will also buy. We also need to get him a phone. We realize he did have a phone. You can't be in school without a phone. So, as Team Bold, we are going to support this boy fully. So, kindly, um, let's support Edwin uh, through um, that number there. I want us to get. There have been a disquiet about the personal fortunes and looking at the level of caution that experts have been sending. It is actually reported in different quarters that even some officers are opting out of the mission. But again, one of the most contagious issues about even opting out is not even what the experts are saying, but when Waziri says, Nimabo ya Mungu, it is not yet clear on personal fortune. Because remember, 
this is going to put your individual as much as you are taking the pride of, you are also elevating the pride of a country but there is individual life going to be in the line here so there is also that need to be relayed clearly and there have been that disquired now sunday not sunday i like saying sunday monday nation has this article height mission is kenya displaying its naivety or it is all about peace it is the story of an exclusive interview that nation team did with um, brigadier general retired emilio tanui head of military veterans at kenya military for peace haiti and they're saying haiti cannot be defined as a peace keeping mission why this is the reason one of Tanui's primary concerns, he told the standard, is that the absence of peace, peace to maintain or enforce in Haiti. Like, you can't say peacekeeping mission. There is no peace in Haiti. So there is no peace to maintain or to enforce. Now, this, it continues to say, unlike traditional peacekeeping missions, where maintaining an existing peace agreement or political process is the goal, Haiti lacks such a foundation. There is no ongoing political process on which to anchor a sustainable and predictable future. Let me explain this by just our neighbors here in Sudan. Sudan, there is a peace process going on that is being negotiated by William Ruto between the two factions, the paramilitary and the military side. So, because what 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 this the military team are saying here is you should go somewhere where there is some process there is there is something you are helping of course uh aid military aid penetration of military aid by reducing the hostilities and also you provide peace as talks continue so that by the time we leave probably the leaders shall have arrived at a decision and maybe they form a joint government or something but on this one Brigadier Tanui is saying there is no foundation on what exactly the police are going to do. And this is a sentiment that was also echoed by retired Captain Felix. I spoke to him on phone. He was part of peacekeeping mission in Sierra Leone. And this is what he said about this mission. I, I saw the military guy saying it is not a peacekeeping mission because in the first place there is no peace there. There's no peace. So you go in, you go in straight away for chapter seven, or what they call a, a peace enforcement. Mm -hmm. And peace enforcement means you have to be uh, that military power. You have to have it. Not only the will, yes. but the, even the, the the machines. You need the machine. The equipment. The equipment you need the equipment you need to go you know you are you should be you should deploy yourself as the way maybe americans deployed in afghanistan yes yeah so if you don't have enough equipment like looking at the kenya we are not criticizing but with an airplane like f5 yes then how do you fight such people <laughs> you know you, you it becomes very tricky because you cannot talk to them these are people you have to force peace to come on mm. there is the question of the language barrier that Haiti is a French mainly French speaking and here we are sending our troops and we are not even sure whether our police we are sending no French there is clear doubt that maybe they may not know French do you think the language barrier might uh, work against uh, Kenya or how will this play out yeah you know when you go for peacekeeping there are so many things that play out like uh, language first of all even uh, the way you fit into the community yes like uh, what we call here in kenya uh, maybe community policing you know you know because you need the locals even to uh, sometimes to help you mm -hmm. uh, and if you don't associate well with the locals then whom are you going to help because there's language barrier you cannot talk and uh, the translators are the same people you are fighting 
Mm -hmm. you know so so it becomes a bit difficult you know and uh, that's why sometimes you find even deployment mm -hmm. uh, yes people force the uh, peacekeeping because peacekeeping even uh, mara, uh, mara, most of the time is again used by these, some countries as a uh, mm -hmm. business mm -hmm. again uh, on the soldiers mm -hmm. yeah but uh, but at the end of it you know you don't achieve the aim because you will not talk to the people you don't know there you know there's nobody to guide you even you cannot get the guide to, to show you the area Mm -hmm. And one of the main principles of the military, you know, when you are deployed, you have to appreciate the, the terrain. So if you cannot appreciate the terrain because you have language barrier, mm -hmm. you you know, then uh, you are very really vulnerable. You know, you are uh, exposed. The, you can easily be attacked. Because there is a pertinent question about how they are going to get intelligence without, and of course, that, the, yeah, you can. That, that, yeah, that's the thing. You can't get, and even from the locals, you can't get. And even if you get, you'll get very few people who are maybe English speaking, and maybe they may not even tell you so much. Why didn't we take military? Let's start there. Why didn't we take military instead of the police? While we have the old, they have been a bit about that, 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 That's the, the question because. The police, you know, the police are um, basically they, they they deal with the internal security, and uh, that uh, that uh, that that uh, okay. Some of them are trained in para para what uh, you know whatever you know uh, military you, you know skills or whatever they are. Mm -hmm. But you may not they. But I've never seen a police because that's the place you are going to be using even I uh, APCs, even sometimes even tankers if it is possible. You know, so the only person who fits in a bit, eh, but not so much, is a soldier, a military soldier, you know, from KDF, but not uh, somebody who, you know, like a traffic police, what will he do in such a place? Because there's no even traffic to keep, first of all. Mm -hmm. You are just in a place where people are just fighting. <laughs> there are no structures, you know. So mm -hmm. to structure these people, you need the military itself. And so there are so many things you are going to deal with, very heavy weapons, very heavy ammunition, you know, maybe bombings, you know, mines, things like that. So I don't know, maybe probably the government has trained the police of late. Uh, of late, maybe they went for some private training. We are not sure, but, you know, deployment of uh, peace enforcement cannot be a, a police, uh, police uh, what service, you know, issue. Mm. Yeah, it can't be. Because even even here in Kenya, we don't see policemen flying even jets or these helicopters, you know, maybe going to bomb somewhere. No. They don't have those techniques. Let me tell you that we Another um, um, international law expert, Evans Ogada, is saying that Kenya may be approaching this mission with um, a degree of naivety considering the complex and perilous challenges that await the Caribbean nation. There is, there is something that is still tying to what they are saying, and both of them are saying something. That is what is in this article, and I asked him, and he told me it was not even supposed to be Kenya police. It was supposed to be military if Kenya meant well for it. Legitimacy of Haiti's interim government and its capacity to enter into obligations on behalf of its citizens is a doubt. Its ability to engage in international agreements is a problem. Remember, the Prime Minister uh, actually came into power after the President was killed. The President was killed by these criminal gangs. So, the, it's been shaky. The military, they formed the military just recently. There have been a question over there are 10,000 police officers there in a country that has 11 million. And they have failed to control the situation. There have also been other foreign interventions in Haiti that have also failed. So Kenya is going to add into the number. But what exactly is their objective is what is not very clear. And looking at this, I just want to narrow down to some two interpretations of this whole mission. The desired outcome of Haiti mission must be reviewed with an action plan and how it's going to be executed. So that what Kenyans expect, what, what we should expect as our soldiers shall have achieved there. We need to get our parameters. Number two, strategic 
plan training is necessary and military is an option. I think that's what comes out. I want to believe uh, this is a matter that so far it's only Foreign Affairs CS that has spoken about it. Then Head of Public Service uh, Felix Kosge and uh, IG Kobe also commented about it yesterday. Then this is the third caucus from military that is talking. I want to believe they're not currently, they're not active now, but for them to come out and give such a statement, it could have some deeper influence, even from those who are currently in uh, active in the military. So this is something that we're going to follow. It's a public interest story, and of course we'll be following. Uh, there, is, there is another expert who also opted that is going to help us break it down. So if he appears also, uh, that we can have before the end of the week.